Before while they get the equipment running, I'll just get to know the audience. How many of you are developers here or okay? So you're fairly familiar with the ins and outs, but I'll still give a brief overview of optimization for you. Uh, how many of you are from UI, UX and want to know how to speed it up? I don't know. Okay. So invite and students who are not familiar with WordPress at all. Okay. So Okay, that's the majority of So, anyway, in, in this talk, I will not go into great technical detail, but I will give you overviews and links you can follow later. My talk is about optimizing WordPress to make it as fast as possible. Uh, WordPress was never designed as a platform to scale up. It was built for personal blogging. But unfortunately, because of ease of use with journalists, uh, it has some of the biggest sites now run WordPress. Okay. Uh, they have moved away from what used to be Drupal and other CMS systems. So I'll stop throwing jargon. CMS is content management system, the software that lets you run your site. Okay. with WordPress, optimizing and pro programming it. I'm a technology evangelist, that is, I understand the technology and try to bring it to you in simple terms. And apart from that, I I think of myself as a bathroom artist and a stand-up comic. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I do not use fancy Macintoshes, so we are stuck with Windows, guys. <laughs> The enterprise features are gone up. I developed on the Linux machine, so for me this is a step up. WordPress optimization and a little varnish. My name is Shana. These are my contact details. Which I usually like tweet, but my phone is dead, so you just ask me your questions the whole way. First thing, it's not me, it's about you. It's also a really good skill deck song. And let's start with the presentation. So, why do you need to optimize anything? The first thing, the Microsoft Bing theme reports that if your user does not engage within the first two seconds, i.e., the site hasn't loaded, all your assets are not out in the first two seconds, he's not going to buy anything from you if you're on an e-commerce site. Because you're a blogging site and the user is there for content, over 10 seconds delay and the customer will leave. He will not read whatever you have put up. Doesn't matter how good it is. But of course, these are just surveys and we don't really care about them. We look at them and we go like, oh, okay, we can just put in more widgets. What's more important is that Google start, has started marking your pages as slow. I don't know if you have seen that. So, Google's new search engine optimization strategy, or the way they figure out whether your page is important, is mobile centric. Okay? That is why there was a question about sidebars in the earlier sessions. Do away with them. Nobody reads web pages on the desktop anymore. Or even if they do, they're fairly happy with single. You know, they're used to of using a mobile phone. And Google checks whether you're mobile friendly. So, there are two labels that you get. You either get a slow to load or a not available on a mobile version page. Make sure whatever themes you use comply to the mobile version at the least and how to speed it up, we talk. So yes, the first thing, Google hates slow websites. Your search results will go down. Uh, they'll flag it to the user. For instance, I was looking for uh, my car battery died, so I was looking for assistance. I will not trust this business to come and reboot my car. If you can't keep a website running, I don't trust you with my car, I'm sorry. right? And that's how it goes. Perception is reality for your users. And second of all, we are we are all very, very used to using high-speed connections and 3G lines, and we ourselves get bored if the site doesn't load. 
Uh, the best example I can give you is if you have ever read a 26 listicles cuckoo article and you have got bored waiting for those inserts to load, the hundreds of GIFs they put in one page. Right? So literally the only users who will engage with that are the users who have the time to do so and most likely not pay. So coming back to the reality of it, you want people who can pay for your products on your site. Right? Google is not the only search engine in the world. There are other bots out there who do index products. For example, the Alexis web rank engine, which makes a list of the top 100,000 web pages, it will not wait on your website if its bot reaches its timeout. And that is anything between 1.4 to 2.3 seconds. They have an enormously high speed connection. So if your page is slow because your script took more than 2 seconds to execute, that part of the script is not going to be indexed. What are the problems people have with WordPress? The first thing is, well it's not WordPress's fault, when WordPress was being built, the web was very new and we didn't really understand how to do things. The problem with the internet as you know it today is that it's built for static content. It's built for you to request a page and for you to get that page. It is not designed to stream video, it's not designed. We do it, we have workarounds. We have ways in which we can handle your uploads and downloads. We have a script running which keeps checking whether that document was sent or not. Then we have other means of uh, transferring high amounts of data. But that is not what it was primarily designed for. And the way servers run is also the same. They are plainly designed to serve you static content. What is the static content? For the, for the people who are new to this, when a computer requests for a web page to a server, it returns with a document. That is all it does. That document could be a HTTP page, uh, HTML page, sorry. It could be an image. It could be a collection of a page, an image, some other JavaScript that needs to come in. But these are all just documents. And till the transaction is not complete, your browser does not think that the, that the page has loaded. Right? That's a common experience we all know. Once the page loads, the browser stops spinning that wheel. Now, WordPress was designed in a language called PHP which is basically the jugaad of all programming languages. It is not efficient and over time it has gotten less so with more and more uh, features such as class-based programming coming in. Uh, there is a story that goes around, everybody says that Facebook was designed using PHP, everybody knows that? Yes. Now what people don't go about saying is once Facebook scaled up, they hired a team of computer scientists to sit and translate the whole thing in Scala. They did a higher level of Jogad, where your PHP code is then translated to either Scala or C code, and that's how they're still running. Yes, Facebook still develops in PHP, but the backend is extremely complicated. And that is because it is faulty by design. But we can't complain about that because PHP is easy. For a, for a student audience there who has maybe not had that much experience in programming, PHP is very easy to approach. You slam a bit of code in an HTML file and it runs, right? There are certain things that you can do to speed PHP up. Your First of all, keep it updated. Always get to the newest and newest versions of PHP. We'll talk about that when we get to hosting. More importantly, chuck out code that you don't need to do in PHP. If you don't need to generate a date to show for the user in PHP, do not. There is JavaScript available for it. It is extremely fast. Browsers are optimized for it. Right? Handle as much as you can on the user interface side of things. Handle less on the server side. Stop loading the server. The second thing, what WordPress does every time you visit a page is that it goes into your database, it looks for all your comments, pops them out, right? Then it goes and looks for all your content, pops them out, and assembles a HTML page. You see how this can be inefficient? Just imagine if you have, for example, him. If I ask him, please make a report, and he has to ask her, for the daily statistics of how many people visited. It has to ask him for upar kripa chipkana hai, right? It will get slow, his work will be slow. If all the things were available with him, he could just give me the report in seconds. What you are doing, every time you use a PHP based thing on your WordPress uh, blog or WordPress site, is you are causing the database engine to run, you are causing the PHP engine to run. These are inherently slow things for things you don't need. Your content is not going to change every second. The comments are not going to update every microsecond. Correct? Do not handle that. So I will get to how, how that works out. Uh, how many of you run active web pages in WordPress here? Or blogs? What do you mean by active? It's on the web. Hi. Okay. So can I have a brief idea of how many plugins you have on your site? Seven to eight. 
Five. None. None. Okay, that's fast. One day. Around 20. So an average user will have between 10 and 15 plugins on their website. And for them, I recommend the WordPress plugin User Anonymous. Please go get de-addicted from the number of plugins that you need to use because these things cost time. When the page loads, every time WordPress runs its own engine to generate your content, it has to run every plugin in your list or most of it which are relevant to your content. Yes. But if we have a multi-site mm -hmm. uh, self-hosted website, yes. there will be supposed to be the whole thing which yes. will be required at least 40, 40 plus plugins. Sure. What, what so there are, I'll talk about those, there are ways to optimize that. This is, I'm th just talking from a general overview, a strategy sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, you need a 40, 40 plus plugin to do maybe advanced functionality. At that point, if your site is getting slow, maybe you're looking at the wrong tool to address the wrong problem. A lot of your plugins go into comments. A lot of your plugins go into uh, indexing your site. There are a lot of other solutions which can run on the same server available for that. You can use Apache Solaris to index and do natural language search. You can use Discuss to handle your plugins. I'll talk about those. But basically, offload everything from WordPress. It is just a blogging engine. At the end of the day, approach it with the philosophy, it's a blogging engine. right? Uh, you have a lot of static content on your site. Uh, if anybody runs a place where journalists actually contribute to it, so I've seen people upload 8 megabytes worth of images of dogs and cats on one post, right? And that takes time to load, no matter how quickly you're accessing the web. You could be on a 10 Gbps connection, it will still take you microseconds to load that. Mainly because the... Sub okay, so the, as internet speeds get faster, I know there's a big argument out there, not so much in India because, well, MTNL and BSNL. If you use the URL, <laughs> yes. If you use the URL, you may URL more Then also, okay, so you know, I'm coming to the fundamental problem in computer science now. Imagine I give you a 100 Gbps connection, right? You can load things across the network really fast. At the end of the day, your hard drive can read 8 megabytes of data at a certain speed only, right? So even though my network speed is huge, that big image takes time to load on my computer itself, right? So always remember it's not just about how fast the user's internet or how fast your internet is. It's about more fundamental limitations of server. And of course there are uh, pingbacks and trackbacks. If you still do that in the century, please stop. They're not helping anybody. You have Twitter to spread and decimate. You have Facebook to spread and decimate. Install the Jetpack plugin push it through. You'll also find that the Jetpack actually takes care of a lot of functionality which you were otherwise looking to third party plugins. They have a stall here, you can bother them afterwards. Uh, stop using pingbacks and trackbacks. The problem with pingbacks is your site might be blazing fast and you might be running it in a $2,000 a month data center. But the site that pinged you back is running on a $5 shared host and that thing is slow. right? So every time somebody loads your page, his page has to be queried too to see if the pingback has updated or has been deleted. No, but when we integrate these APIs mm -hmm. like Facebook, Twitter, API, yes. it, it, that, that API is also... So most of this API integration today also, if you go and actually look at the Facebook API now, the latest versions of the API are decimated either in Python or in JavaScript. They have stopped yeah. here. So it's all happening on the user's computer. <coughs> the page loads up, the JavaScript API loads up, that connects up with Facebook and then gets your assets. Your page is not penalized anymore. Uh, I'll talk about that when I talk about content delivery networks. Okay, we'll just move ahead. So I, I'll briefly run through three slides of 10 things that are really, really wrong with WordPress when you go to sit and optimize them. And these are the 10 things you should look at at first. And I'll throw in two bonus at the end because I ran out of my slides. Anyway, the first thing is choose a good host. And I cannot stress this enough. If you are trying to save a few rupees on your hosting right now, just remember, there's a lot of people like you trying to save a few rupees on your hosting. And you're going to end up on that same server with 2,000 other people. Somebody could be running, for all you know, a web video streaming website on the same server. No matter how advanced a uh, shared host technology is in catching these people who abuse the web server, it's not going to be enough. So I'll give you a brief overview of the kinds of hosting that I like to use personally. And maybe you can access it too. Uh, but first, choose a good host. You get what you pay for, just remember it's like buying shoes and vegetables. You get what you pay for. You save money there, you'll get a slower host. And don't be taken into the promise of unlimited bandwidth and unlimited disk space. Do you really need unlimited bandwidth? Do you actually have millions? And 
trust me, at the point where you need more than two terabytes of bandwidth in a month, you need to move out to your own either dedicated host or virtual host or data center. So don't go into those promises. Bluehost does a great job, and I would recommend them, but I'll talk about that uh, later. Bluehost is also here, so that was sponsor placement. Themes. WordPress comes with a very boring default theme, but trust me, <laughs> hundreds and hundreds of developers have put incredible amounts of man hours optimizing every last loop. In fact, if you go and read the git comments, there's something like I spent 8 hours on it and the next guy tag I spent 24 hours on it. It's just 3 milliseconds faster, but it is that's important. That's the fastest theme you can get for WordPress. Let's be honest about 2015. that. 2015, 2014, 2013, you have a choice, right? Some amount of choice. I don't say use the default WordPress theme because I understand. Uh, as a developer, I would love to tell you, please use this, this is fast. But users don't like it, you want a customized site. But what I'm saying is please compare whichever theme you choose to the 2015 theme. If the 2015 took five seconds to load on a connection, your theme should not take more than seven. Right? Are, are there any ways to calculate these? Uh, yes, uh, there are. There are ways that you can run them. Page Ping them is Ping one, so okay. Uh, Google Web Speed. I would recommend Google Web Speed. I'll talk about those. Ping them is actually run from Google's web server itself. It is a Google Apps. It was basically a hobby project of someone, and I wouldn't recommend it for industrial use. But of course, as a brief overview to see if your site is up or not, Ping them is great. But again, I would recommend Jetpack. It's made by the people who make WordPress. It's run on enormously better facilities. Caching. So Navjot Singh Siddhu puts his catches win matches. This is the only thing you need to do. Like you can listen to my talk and go home and say kya pakaya hai and do this and you will still feel an improvement in speed. So my first, the thing that I introduced to you, what is your problem with WordPress? Every time you need to create a page, it is querying a database server, it is querying text files and generating the same bloody page 50,000 times a second. Why? Just cache that one page, save it somewhere in the computer's memory and keep serving that page over and over and over. Right? Now there are very advanced ways of doing this. You can cache it with a shared host using some WordPress plugins. Uh, there's W3 Total Cache, I'll talk about them. Or if you have your own server, nothing like it. Install Varnish, your problems in life will start to solve. And I'll show you a case study of a website which, uh, in fact, I'll just speak about it now itself. Have you seen the Raspberry Pi? Yes, yes. That is less powerful than your phone. And we have successfully run a WordPress website which served 70,000 pages in a minute on that one page just with Varnish catching. 70,000. 70, there were 70,000 hits distributed over a period of a minute in a Gaussian pattern, so it's random enough. And uh, it, so it didn't crash. The reason is computers are really good at sending files they already have. And they're really pathetic at creating files that you want them to create. Right? You can. You can take a very simple example, install Apache on a new machine, okay? keep a 1 MB image there and just send it. This is for the people who already know how to develop things, right? Just download that image, measure the time. Write a PHP script that generates a 1 MB file, you know, fill it up with zeros if you like and send the same file. There will be at least a 5 times difference in speed. Because computers take a long time to process anything, it will be very honest with you. But they are really fast at input output, IO. And this is again from the basics of it. Okay, so I will very quickly skip to my recommendations. I'll put this page, uh, thing up, my presentation up, so you can go through it. Yeah, I'll just wind up in two minutes. Quickly, the parts that take away from this. Hosting recommendations. Shared host, if you must be on a shared host, go for web faction. It is $10 a month and it allows you access into the root. So all these strategies that I told you about caching, about uh, saving, you can go and do it there. No other shared host allows this as far as I know. Bluehost is also good if you are not so technically inclined, it will serve your purpose well enough. Bluehost, Hostgator, Which one? Hostgator. Hostgator, I, I mean if you start looking at comparisons, Bluehost is still faster, but I would still recommend if you are a little technically inclined, please try and see web faction. It is not that much. Bluehost, India or Bluehost? It doesn't matter, they run on the same network. Uh, it is not so expensive to switch to one of these today. Cloud hosting is the way to go. The, the Raspberry Pi I was talking about, imagine if instead of a Raspberry Pi you are running this on a server, instead of 7000 hits, 
you have 7 million. A cloud is the only thing that can scale to serve your purpose. So please look at these digital ocean. OVH is the cheapest as far as I know. Linode and Amazon AWS is the most expensive but the most effective. In one of these slides, I have put a talk by somebody else, not me. Uh, this one, you can go watch it on WordPress TV. This is basically the world's largest WordPress site, that is BuzzFeed, and how it was optimized. And uh, you'll be surprised at how much you can just get away with Varnish, the solution I told you about. And there are some plugins that I've recommended. Varnish is a plugin? Varnish is not a plugin. Varnish is a completely separate server setup. So just like you have Apache and Nginx, Varnish runs in front of that and it doesn't even invoke the server if it does not need to. That is how you can get a very high speed. Uh, of course, I'll go back to my hosting recommendation because that is probably the most important that you need to see. Finally, if you do not have a tech guy to manage this and you, know, you don't want to hire one, Pagely. They do everything that I just spoke about and they give you it as a service. It is about $29 a month. It is not so expensive if you actually compare a tech guy's salary. WP Engine, and these are some of the others, but PageD is the one that I have recommended to a lot of people and they found it easy to use. So that's where we are on the scalability of things. One last thing. Yes. Uh, what is uh, uh, your opinion of the uh, uh, WordPress hosted solutions? Uh, hmm. What do you call them these days? Where they give you a WordPress the managed. Solution. I like to call them outsourced solutions, but uh, managed hosting. Yes. So that's the one I was recommending. PageD is the best that I have found. Oh, that's the one. Yeah. Uh, actually, one of my slides, I just explained quickly. <coughs> you want to outsource your work? Yes, PageD is really good. WordPress.com anyway works out of the box, but you can't put your own ad so that you have a problem. I would suggest if you have, if you have the technical... So, none of these VPSs are actually so technically complex anymore. OVH gives you a default WordPress box. You just say, I want a WordPress box and it gives you a folder. Even DigitalOcean has a one-click... Uh, yeah, one-click installer. Yes, yeah, so they're quite easy to use. I would recommend using them. And quite cheap. And you can then do advanced things like split your workload across multiple servers. So we'll go into that maybe at a later talk. So that's about it. I know I have not covered all of my slides, but I wanted to go slow with it. Uh, this is my contact details. You can drop me an email and a tweet at any time. And I will hopefully uh, answer this. And this presentation will go up, so you can read through it. Is there any code which helps to create optimization? Which one? Is there any code? Uh, yes. As uh, Mani has told me, just upload this code in the cPanel. Well. Yes, uh, not in the cPanel because if you are using cPanel, you cannot actually install Varnish. There are some other solutions that don't work so well. I would suggest you use W3 Total Cache that will mostly handle all your needs. Yes. How good are ARM servers? Okay, so that, now if you go into the computer science aspect of it, ARM servers are for, for WordPress. For WordPress, they are useless. Stick to x86 because we Varnish is a plugin which comes from Valgrind, which is a Linux memory solution, and that's why x86. I'm well aware of Varnish actually. Yeah. I saw there is a provider called PageScale. Yes. Who provides ARM server, ARM core yes, servers, yes. and that is pretty cheap. Like I would suggest since you are already familiar, yeah, yeah, if you're already familiar with Varnish, personally I would recommend try moving to Hugo. Sorry. Hugo. Hugo. So Hugo is uh, another competitor to WordPress, so I probably should not speak about it in a WordPress conference. Well, well, this is great. So, yeah. uh, there is last year. Yes. Uh, how we upgrade our, uh, right now, we're currently hosting that. Yes. How we upgrade our WordPress. So if you're on a shared host, again, you're stuck with whatever they give you, right? No, we are on Amazon. You're on Amazon. So what you do is you simply download the WordPress executable into your folder, unzip it, and just restart your site. Everything is all the same. There is a very easy path. In fact, WordPress updates itself. Since I think version 4, WordPress updates itself, so you don't have to bother. Yeah. If you are on Amazon uh, infrastructure, please install the Amazon S3 plugin for WordPress. It will solve all your needs. Yes. It will distribute. That doesn't matter. So what the Amazon S3 plugin does is distribute your site automatically. All your static content will go to Amazon S3. All your long archive content will go to Glacier. So you can see that. Yes. Warnish setup. How does it compare with Nginx? So you can use Warnish with Nginx. Warnish is your first thing that handles your HTTP request. If it thinks that okay, it needs to invoke the server, okay. 
One, I would also not recommend running it that way because see, Nginx at the end is an experimental thing. I mean, it's not experimental, it's hard to run. So what I would recommend is have a traditional Apache setup, use Varnish with it, you will get a good, uh, unless you really need to scale up immensely and you're stuck on hardware. Uh, I'll upload this presentation, I have put in all the things. So the presentation I designed so you can just read it even if I'm not there. Any other questions very quickly? Is using a free SSL from Cloudflare worthy or not? You can use Cloudflare, that's one of the slides I didn't talk yeah, about. Yeah, I've used, uh, it's using uh, free SSL. Yes. Is yes. that about, uh, what free or not? Should, should I go for the premium? Mode? No, I think if you are not selling, there is, if you are not having an e-commerce yeah, site, there is no need. That is sufficient. Warnish with e-commerce? I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, very frankly, if you want to run an e-commerce solution, do not cash because you need SQL transaction ability, which one is this? But okay, another thing is if you're running an e-commerce solution using PHP, then PrestaShop does an extremely good job of optimization. So maybe we'll talk in there. Yeah, later. Again, we're going into other solutions. Can you tell me the name of any website which is on board? Oh, there are plenty. Just if you put it in Google, yeah. one which is the best. I don't think I remember one, but you can just put it in e-commerce WordPress. There are plenty. There are plenty of plugins that help you do that as well. WordPress, all from the website. Yeah, yeah. There's WooCommerce for Woo themes, but I just want to see the actual site. I think when WordPress sells your subscription, when you sell stuff online, when you buy a T-shirt, the I love WordPress T-shirt, that's e-commerce solution. Uh, it's effective. I would not not recommend it. But of course, if you need a dedicated e-commerce solution, you have to look at it. Again, the uh, final conclusion, please. Yes, lunchtime. And final thing is, use the right tool for the right thing. Want e-commerce? Use something else. So that's about it.